Well, praise God, everybody. Come on in. You may have a seat. Welcome. Well, those of you that might be newer tonight or this is your first time, my name is Pastor Matt, and that is my wife, Andrea, on the keyboard that was singing there. And welcome to Soul Harvest Church tonight. Thank you for being with us. We don't always have basketball goals on our platform, but those go with our theme for Sunday mornings, and so we thought we'd decorate a little bit. Uh, so if you're wondering, why do they have basketball goals? Every time I preach a good point, we, we go up and slam dunk it, you know. <laughs> no. Welcome tonight. Hey, we're, we're going to do something special. I just called an audible, um, and, and it's this. We're, we're going to take communion here in a little bit. At the end of our service tonight, we're going to receive communion. I just felt like, you know what, we're going to, we just need to receive communion tonight. And uh, so we're going to do that, praise God. We're going, to, we're going to enjoy, because like that song, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. And uh, I'll tell you, there, I, I sense there, there, there's three things that need to happen when we do communion tonight. Number one, we're going to recognize the body and the blood of Jesus. And the Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians 11, it says many are sick because they don't properly recognize that body and the blood. And, and I believe that when we take time on a regular basis to have communion, we're going back and remembering the covenant that we have with Jesus, that because he took those stripes, because he was obedient to the death on the cross, because of his blood, by his stripes, we are healed. The second thing that's going to happen tonight when we take communion is I believe there are some people here tonight, and, and, and I don't know if it's just you've had a rough week or, or you've you had a rough life, uh, but I, I sense that as you take communion tonight, there's some of you that you've come to the end of, 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 of your rope on something, or you, you're really struggling with something, and I just sense there's going to be a special moving of God on your behalf. And as you, and, and the communion, there's nothing magical about communion here, okay, but, but there's just times that I feel is an act of faith. There are times I feel is an act of, as we, as we participate and invoke the presence of God in our lives, there are times that he moves in response and we just see wonderful things. Amen. Amen. And so, and the third thing I believe that's going to happen is, as it always happens is, we're drawn closer to Jesus every time we think about that body and that blood. We are drawn closer uh, to him. Amen. Look who we got here. Juanita's back. Praise God. Yeah, we're so glad you're here. Tell you what, I'm more glad Jesus is here, but I'm glad you're here too. <laughs> uh, just a couple quick things. We have the birthday party this Sunday night. If your birthday is in the month of March, oh, we have a party especially for you. It'll be this Sunday night in the cafe. We provide the main course and the cake and ice cream. You just bring a side and your, your spouse or friend. And uh, we have a great time dedicating babies on March 29th. And we got a lot of them to dedicate. So we'll be dedicating babies. If you'd like to have your baby dedicated, sign up in the foyer. And then, oh my goodness, we have on the horizon, hallelujah, the devil thought he had won. The devil thought he, he had got one over on Jesus, and he had him put on that cross on Friday night, and he had him put in that tomb, and the devil thought, I'm getting ready to take over, and he just did not anticipate when Jesus was on that cross, and he said, it is finished, that the devil's plans were ruined, because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. And folks, I cannot wait to celebrate with you Resurrection Sunday on April the 12th. We'll have a sunrise service at 7 in the morning. And then we'll have uh, 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 regular services at 8.30 and 10.30. They're both the same. We've got the passion play, the free pancakes, all sorts of things we're doing. This is the time we as a church, we go to work because we know when, when someone's out there, they know they don't want to go to church. They're like, I don't want it. I don't want it. But they know, well, at least I got to go on Easter. So have, you know how sometimes car dealerships have the push, pull, or drag it in sale? We'll give you $2,500 for your trade no matter what kind of condition it's in. Some of you have taken advantage of that before. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, <laughs> push, pull, or drag them in because we're believing God's going to touch a lot of lives. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So that's coming up on the horizon. Do y'all enjoy Carmen Sunday night? Yeah. Wasn't that great? I'll tell you. And uh, that brings us to tonight. And let's believe God. Father, I ask that you put me on a, tonight again as we teach the living words of God. I ask that you touch the lives of every person here and watching online. Lord, let it not be a religious experience to that of going through the motions, but let it be an encounter with Jesus Christ. That every one of us, different backgrounds, different struggles, different age brackets, but we all have this thing in common that Jesus Christ loves us so much. And Lord, I just pray you minister to each one of these tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, a word the Lord gave me, I'm not sure if it was for tonight or for Sunday, so I'm going to give it both. Uh, and, and, and the word is, is this, uh, it, it has to do with drinking. And uh, I, I want to say that, you know, we've had this conversation before a few times. I cannot prove to you that it is absolutely forbidden in Scripture to drink alcohol. I can't prove it. I'd like to be able to, but I can't, okay? Okay. Um, at the same time, I've never heard anybody say my family was a wreck and then I found Budweiser and that fixed our family. But I've heard a lot of people say our family was okay and then I found Budweiser and then it ruined our family. And, and I'm from a family like one of those, okay? And I want to just share with you tonight. I, I can't prove to you or force anybody to stop drinking. But the word I had in my heart was there are people, and, and, it's, and look, this isn't about condemnation. This isn't about shame on you. This isn't about guilt. There's nothing like that. But there are folks that it's beginning to become a lifestyle. And it's no longer you're, you're doing it just every so often. It's becoming part of who you are and you're almost craving that drink when you get home more than you are being in the presence of God. And, and if I'm talking to you tonight, that's not for, look, that's between you and God. I'm just a messenger. But I would tell you there's a grace in this place for you to let that go tonight. And there's a grace for Sunday morning to let that go. And that's between you and Jesus. I'm not, at, I'm, I'm, I'm not look, I'm not here to be the, the moral police I'm not here to tell you, you know, don't, 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 don't. But I am here to say, you know what? There is a better way. There is a better way. And God loves you so much. And he will provide the grace and the help of the Holy Spirit to break that, what has become, you don't realize it, but what has become an addiction. And, uh, and he'll break that. You say, well, I can quit anytime I want. How many of us children of alcoholics have heard that hundreds of times? Okay, so I would challenge you, prove it. Prove it. Amen. That's just, a, just, just for, tonight, that's for you tonight. And uh, my goodness, uh, let me say this out of, out of love and, 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 and genuine concern. Uh, I, I try not to. Uh, I don't want to say this. I don't want to under-exaggerate something. But there's a lot of people really concerned about the coronavirus, okay? And, and I don't want to dismiss their concern. Listen, there have been people that have died because of this, okay? Uh, however, when I look at what is really happening, and I look at the response to what is really happening, it is completely disproportionate, okay? It's kind of like, if your child um, accidentally spilled their milk and you kicked them out of the family because they spilled their milk, the response is disproportionate to what really happened, okay? And if we're really concerned about things, let's, let's champion stopping smoking, because that's killing more in three days, every three days just in America, than the coronavirus has killed, okay? Let's champion abortion being overturned. Let's champion, let's get people off of Mountain Dew. 
obesity is going to kill you a lot more than coronavirus. Okay, Mountain Dew is a much greater threat to you. Or sugary sodas is a much greater threat to you than the coronavirus. Okay? And so let's, let's keep our reactions intact. Now, I do want to have wisdom. And uh, we're formulating behind the scenes. Now, it, it really is not a hard plan. Now, we do a lot of things. There's a lot of cleanliness that goes on here. And there's just some normal things, you know, we could do and remind everybody. Don't sneeze into your hand and then shake somebody's hand. Those are just wonderful things. And I see now that our nation has somehow turned all their attention to using soap. And I'm thinking, <laughs> that was kind of always a staple in my house. <laughs> if anybody needs to borrow some, <laughs> we've got plenty. Okay, we, <laughs> I don't know why everybody's rushing for soap and toilet paper. We kind of use those. That we're, we're okay there, praise God. But uh, if we did see that there is some type of pandemic, which is what it's being called, and we sense that our people would anyway be in jeopardy, we will absolutely put a plan in place to protect you and to help you to be safe. But in the meantime, This is garbage. It is total, complete garbage by the media. That's what it is. Amen. Now what, and I'm not talking about not being upset that somebody had gotten sick, but the way they're responding is not cool, okay? And they're trying to shut, I don't know if it's trying to shut the economy, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish other than sell their pharmaceutical products. All right. But I want to encourage you to be wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. And I want to encourage you, use your wisdom, and we'll use our wisdom. And if I sense, you know what, 40% of the church has flu or 20% of the church has flu, yeah, we'll do an online broadcast that day. Yeah, there, there's no, but guess what? <laughs> I ain't going to be, you're, you'll, you'll have more issues over being afraid and stressed out than you will. I remember when I saw, I put this on our screen, it's been a year or two ago, and, and there was a person, there was a, a pregnant lady, and she was obviously pregnant, and she, it was a newspaper clipping, and she says, yeah, I'm really concerned the effects global warming is going to have on my children, as she was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and you just think, yep, yeah. and, and they vote. Praise the Lord. Okay, moving on. There were some guys in a locker room after uh, playing some basketball at the local rec center, and there was a cell phone sitting on the bench, and it went off, and so one of the guys goes over and answers it, says, hello, oh, hi, honey. And the voice on the other line, and they can kind of, people can kind of hear what she's saying. She says, oh, hi, honey. She says, I'm, I'm driving through, through, and I, I, I've just driven by the mall, and they're having this great sale, and there was this awesome, awesome diamond ring I wanted, and I, it looks like it's on sale. It's about $2,500, and the guy who answered, oh, honey, I think it's a good day. Go ahead and get it. And she says, oh, thank you, honey, and, and she says, uh, and, and since you're in a good mood, she says, I got to tell you, I've been kind of needing a new car, and I saw, I, I was driving by, and the Lexus dealer is having a discounted sale today. I'd like to get that new Lexus I've been asking you about. And the guy said, well, sure. I said, Go ahead, honey. It's, it's, you, you, we, I, you deserve it. And she said, well, thank you, honey. And she said, and oh, by the way, there has been this uh, uh, house uh, 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 online. It's a vacation property. I've been looking at it, and I've been pulling some strength. I think we could get it for about $289,000. What do you think? And the guy said, well, you know, honey, do you really want it? And she said, yeah, then go for it. She said, oh, I love you, honey, you're the best. I love you too, bye-bye. They hung up. And the guys who overheard the conversation said, man, you must be generous. I mean, I can't believe you gave all that to your wife. And the guy said, oh, that's not my, I don't know whose phone that was. I just answered it. So we're in, this is uh, part seven of our series, and I've got one more part after this. I'm probably not going to get through all this tonight, I, I, as of 
which is kind of the, the norm, but we'll just keep continuing it. Um, the, number one, we talked about a couple months ago, the role of the United States in the last days, what the Bible says about the last days. Number two, why and how to study prophecy in the Bible. Number three, the rapture of the church. Number four, the tribulation period and eternal time periods. Number five, and that, that, that alone took three Wednesday nights uh, to do. Last week was current prophetic realities, and we got through half of that last week. I'll pick up there briefly tonight. And then tonight, living as a Christian in the last days. And then the last one I want to preach or minister on is how close are we? If I could, if I could tell you scripturally speaking, and is there anything in the Bible that has not happened yet before Jesus comes back? And I want to show you some scriptures to look at that will be telltale signs of when Jesus is coming back. So tonight, let me just pick up a little bit from last week. Uh, current things we see that have prophetic significance, current prophetic realities. And does everybody have an outline for tonight? If you don't have an outline, they'll raise your hand and they'll serve you. If anybody needs one, they'll get you one. Okay, there's one right back there, brother. Okay, one right back there, one right back there, the teacher. Oh, Lord. She's on the, I get it, you're on the praise team. Right over here. And those ladies were cooking. Okay, you guys get a pass. All right. Um, one of the greatest things symbolizing current prophetic realities out of Scripture is in 1948 when Israel was reformed as a nation. That probably has the greatest single prophetic impact in, the, in all the prophetic Scriptures. Uh, we talked about that last week. Other, we talked about Daniel 12, 3 and 4. In the last days, knowledge would increase and many would go to and fro. There would be a great busyness. And we're living in the greatest technological times of the world, history, and everybody is busy. We talked about birth pangs, how as we get closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ, the intensity of natural disasters and, 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 and pestilences and famines will go up and be stronger, and we showed graphs that showed we're absolutely seeing those things happen. And then lastly, we talked about last week, a nuclear Middle East. And that brings us to tonight. Uh, one of the things that we'll see that will have a prophetic significance for the last days is a push for a one world order. I, I think everybody has heard that. I don't want to take too much time to, to elaborate on that. But I do believe the United Nations, uh, when we see the formation of the European Common Union, uh, we, we see a push when we even see, uh, and I don't want to put in, anybody down, but, but we see even certain sects of Christianity saying uh, and believing that all religions lead to heaven. And, and, and uh, we, we've seen uh, where some very, very high and notable Christian uh, leaders or Catholic leaders have, have come out and, and, and been very pro-Muslim. And uh, that's, that's, not, that's not biblical, okay? And I'm not saying we have to be anti-Muslim or hate people, but we have to understand that people who are Muslim are not getting to heaven based on Allah. They're, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ, okay? He is the way, the truth, and the light. There is no other way to the Father except through him, okay? Uh, and then number five, false Christ and deceptions. Matthew chapter 24 is called the warning chapter of the Bible. Three times in Matthew 24 it says, take heed, no one deceives you. And we're seeing so many people being deceived. And I, I don't want to go too much into this tonight, but I, I will tell you, the, the, the thing I'm seeing right now that, that's really a, a couple things that are really hurting the church, and the, the church in America, the church around the world. There's two big, two big things I see. Now, we know there's the, the Jehovah's Witness, there's the Mormons, there's the universe, there's different cults out there. Most people in this church are very versed in those things. As far as we know, that's not right. There's a couple things that I see recurring in the body of Christ today that I believe are deceiving many. One 
you hear me talk about it on a regular basis, is the message of hyper grace. The message of salvation without repentance. Salvation without holiness. Salvation without pursuit of God. And we just don't see that in Scripture. There needs to be a pursuit of God. Now, I'm not talking about the thief on the cross. We all know the thief on the cross, he had no time to be sanctified, no time to go to church, no time to do anything. We get that. And he was pardoned and given a place in heaven. Praise God. But at the same time, we're not dying in 20 minutes from now. We have a life ahead of us. And those of us who are born again, there should be fruit in our lives. If you, if you plant a garden, how many of y'all know, with the weather we're having, you need to be putting your cold weather crop out in the next couple of weeks. Amen. amen. Can, I get an, can I get an amen? amen? Yeah. It's time for those peas, those onions, those radishes, the lettuce, the spinach. It's time for that to go in the ground, praise God. By Mother's Day, you'll be eating some good stuff. All right. That went over well. I can, I can see you're all very excited. You're still grumpy from daylight savings time. I can tell you. But I still don't know why we had to take an hour out of my life. I'll tell you what. I want that hour back. Well, you'll get it back in November. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this, if you plant... A, a seed, and I don't know if it's ever happened to you, where you thought you planted something and it wasn't that. Uh, there, there's times I thought I planted, you know, peas and it was beans, or I got lettuce instead of spinach. And, 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 and there's sometimes, some, some different places, especially if you go to the bulk seed place. One time, I won't say where I got it, but it was a bulk seed place, and, and all their stuff, I know their stuff was mislabeled, because I, I thought I was planting corn and it ended up being all beans, you know. And, uh, well, I know the difference between a bean and a corn seed, but you, know, you get the gist. Silver queen or, or whatever. Well, if you see corn, ears of corn, you can know that's not a bean plant. Amen. If you see apples on a tree, that is not an orange tree. The tree is known by its fruit. And there are a lot of people saying, well, you know what? I don't have to have fruit. That's not true. And the other thing I see is there is a, a movement that is telling people you don't need to go to church. And we're going to hit that here in a little bit. There are people that are creating entire social media personas under the guise of ministry. And they're trying to pull people out of church. They're not trying to put them into a church. They're just trying to attract followers on social media and they're taking people out of churches and putting them into the vast wilderness. And, and that's a bad thing, okay? And, and, and I, I want to bring something else up. I want to have a teaching point. How many have heard of comedian John Christ? Has anybody heard of him? How many thought he was a pretty funny guy, huh? You, you, how many, raise your hand if you've heard John Christ. Raise your hand if you've never heard John Christ. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, you guys, John Christ was a social media giant, and he was a comedian, but he was a Christian comedian. And there have been churches that have had him in Indianapolis. And he had a lot of funny stuff. And, and a lot of people loved him. He was a likable guy. But here in the last few, he even had a Netflix special that was coming out here in the next month. And he had some major deals. And it came out that John Chris was using his position and his media influence to take advantage of women and young women. And, uh, and he was preying upon them in a very, very horrible way. And so he's disappeared off the face of the earth. You can't find him anywhere on social media. His Netflix show got canceled, and rightfully so. But I say all that to say, uh, we're living in a time when a lot of people are falling away. You know, uh, there, Willow Creek Church, and, and I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of churches that have modeled after Willow Creek, and, and, and this, this is not one of them, by the way. We are not a Willow Creek Church. Now, I'm not against Willow Creek, but this is just, that's not who we are. But the main pastor there, I mean, after all those years, I mean, it came out, he was sexually exploiting women, you know? And another big pastor in Chicago, big following, they had a campus church, two campus churches in Indianapolis, 
and a guy had a big following and, and had a, you know, big name. Come to find out, you know, he's doing terrible, terrible things behind the scenes. And, and the list goes on. Ted Haggard, Jimmy Baker, Jimmy Swaggart. Dear Lord, Jimmy, Jimmy Baker, I mean, we, we forget. He did some bad things. I forgave him. You forgave him. He just got forbidden uh, by the, Fe the Federal Trade Commission issued him a, 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 an edict here this last week because he's selling some type of magical coronavirus solution. He's been, and, and, and I, listen, Jimmy, you got pardoned, buddy. You got forgiveness, and now he's using his influence to go right back into this stuff. Not, and, and come on, man. We love you, Jimmy. He's better than that. He, 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 he's called, he is called of God, anointed by God, and he's using that calling and that influence for negative things, Okay. And uh, I, I, could, I could give you a long list. Man, if you're Catholic, I mean, it's been a bad 30 years for you. All the stuff coming out about the allegations and proven allegations of priests that have molested children. That's horrible. Horrible. And then it gets swept under the rug. Well, if you can't sweep that under the rug... And there's, there's a falling away. Uh, I, I've moved into point six, by the way. And uh, lukewarmness and coldness, these are signs of the times that we see that Jesus told the disciples that in the last days, many shall be offended and the love of many shall grow cold. Okay, that's Matthew chapter 24. And we're seeing through a hyper grace. Man, now I'm all for grace. Everything I have is by grace. I minister by grace. I'm married by grace. And some of you, I've tasted your cooking. You eat by grace. <laughs> we don't ever discount our need for God's amazing grace. But we don't ever say grace is something it's not. And that is a license to live a fruitless, repentless, unsanctified, unholy life. Amen. Amen. Okay. So a falling away is part of current prophetic realities. Now, that moves us tonight. Living as a Christian in these last days. Turn in your Bible to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. And you've heard me say this before. This is one of the most difficult chapters in the entire Word of God. It's a very scathing chapter that demands repentance and action. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 13. says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them are wise and five are foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there not be enough for you. Rather go out to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you do not know the day or the, or the hour. That we watch that the Son of Man is coming. And there's, I would want you to know from this, <laughs> number one, the bridegroom was delayed. There are so many people, and, and, and we've already had this conversation in this teaching 
we really don't know when Jesus is coming back. There's a lot of people who said, he's going to come back in my lifetime. He's going to come back on this day. He's going to come back this time. You cannot bank on that. The bridegroom was delayed in his coming. We, just because we think he ought to come doesn't mean he's going to come. How many of y'all ever thought Jesus should have answered your prayer one way and he didn't answer it that way? Lord, I, I, want, I wanted to be, you know, maybe, maybe you thought, maybe, maybe you're 27 years old. And you told God you were supposed to be married by the time you were 26 and already have two kids. And he didn't care. He is not motivated by our timetable. He was delayed. But the second thing I want you to see, the five wise virgins, this is going to mess up some of your religious ideas, use the word here that we don't like to use in Christianese. They use the word No. You know, it's okay to say no from time to time. When, when someone, and, and, and Megan can tell you how many panhandlers we get coming by our church day after day after day, phone calls, and, and, and you say, well, shouldn't we help the poor? Yes, we should help the poor, but well, who the Bible calls poor and who our society calls poor, those are two different poors. Okay. And when someone is living foolish, all you're going to do is take the money that you earned, it was designed to help your family and the things that you, or the purposes that God called you to tap into, and now you're going to take that money and give it to somebody who's living foolish, and they're going to take it and use it for drugs, alcohol, and foolishness. They're not going to use it for righteous causes. So sometimes it's okay to say no. Everybody say no. Sometimes you have, you have to tell your family no. Sometimes you have to tell your kids no. There, there, there was a book written back in the 60s, and, and the book said, don't ever tell your children no. And there's a lot of people that, that got into that book. And those children that were raised under that became the greatest hellions ever known to man. You've got to tell your kid no. Amen. Now, here's what I want to get to. There were five wise, and there were five foolish. Now, it did not say there were five virgins and five prostitutes. It did not say there were five Jews and five Gentiles. It said there were 10 virgins, all part and invited to the wedding. Yet there were five wise that got in and five foolish that did not get in. And I, I, want, I want to preach a little wake up that sometimes not everybody who thinks they're getting in is going to get in. And just because you're invited doesn't mean you get in. And these foolish ones did not have the oil. So when the bridegroom was delayed, they did not have the substance to keep their lamp burning. Now you can draw from that many conclusions. I don't have time to help you draw them tonight. I encourage you, though, to spend time in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what he wants you to know from that. How many of y'all know the Holy Spirit is our teacher? Amen. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Matt. But you can open the Bible Monday through Saturday, and the Holy Spirit is greater than Pastor Matt. Amen. Amen. I, someone called me tonight and I said, Pastor, I've grown so much under your ministry. I said, well, you know what? I've grown so much under my ministry. Not because, because I keep growing. I'm a better preacher today than I was 10 years ago. That's a good place to say amen. amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm a better pastor than I was 10 years ago because I just keep, keep pushing. I, I'm, I'm still reading books. I'm still going to conferences. I'm still asking. I'm still seeking God. I'm hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Amen, aren't you? Amen. amen. I'm growing so you can grow. Amen. I don't ever want to get stagnant in my faith. I want to be like Methuselah, or not Enoch. I'm just walking so close to God, one day I'm just really, oh, hey, I'm in heaven. You know, Enoch never died. He walked with God. He was and he was not. Amen. He was just walking with God one day, and the next thing he knew, they took a walk. They were in heaven, and that was it. He said, I don't want to go back. Amen. In Matthew chapter 7, 
verse 22, 21 to 23. And I want these verses to get down in your spirit. I, I want them to be verses that the Holy Spirit will use to bring conviction into your life. Not legalism. Not fear from a worldly perspective, but the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What do they practice? Lawlessness. They, they were able to do miracles. They were able to, to cast out devil, but yet they worked iniquity. They worked lawlessness. Listen, the greasy grace message is from hell. Okay. And there were people who up until the time they stood before Jesus thought they were getting into heaven based on the fact that they had positions in ministry. Now, that, that's, that's the script. That Jesus said that, by the way. Jesus gave us Matthew chapter 7, not, not, not Pastor Matt. Man, if I wrote it, it'd be a whole different thing. If I wrote it, I'd be like, well, you know, try to be good. Do your best. But our best will never be good enough. They called him Lord, but yet they did not get in. That, that sits with me. I want you to, if you have time, turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 1. And Lynn, can you get this on the screen for me? Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. And they went into the Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have, you do to do with, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now this is a demon talking. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet, come out of him. Can we go back to verse 24, the preceding verse? Uh, this is a demon speaking. Now look what the demon says. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. The demon knew who Jesus was. He knew he was God. But yet he was a demon. There will be people that say, oh, well, I, know, I know Jesus is the way. But man, a demon can know that Jesus is the way. But that demon, you know, rebelled in heaven and is sentenced to an eternal torment. And I would encourage people, and I know this is our Wednesday night crowd, but at the same time, you know, when we're having conversation with our family and friends, I don't want you to be the, the big hellfire and brimstone person. And, you know, when you show up at the family get-together, everybody says, oh, great, here they are again. But at the same time, at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, we, you know, Isaiah 58, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and declare the sins to my people. And it, we, we do have to have a voice that wants to wake people up and say, you know what, this, there is a reality here. This thing is going to come to a head. We're going to stand face to face with Jesus and just being a good person 
and knowing, yeah, I believed in him, the devil believes in Jesus. Okay, and, and we see again another demon in Mark chapter 5. The demon calls Jesus the son of the most high God. Well, in Luke chapter 4, a demon calls Jesus the holy one of God. Anyone can call on the name of Jesus as title and refer to him as God, but yet not allow their heart to be changed. In Revelation chapter 3, talking about the Laodicean church, verse 16, this is a tough one. And these are the words of Jesus. These aren't the words of Pastor Matt. These are the words of Jesus. And he says to this church at Laodicea, he says, I wish that you were hot or cold, but you are lukewarm. He said, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And lukewarm, a mixture of hot and cold. I'm not Jesus. I, I'm not the one who gets to say who gets to go into heaven and who doesn't. That's, that's totally between people and Jesus. I've got my own salvation to walk out with fear and trembling. Amen. But I would share tonight that Jesus stating his thoughts about lukewarmness, that he would spit them and vomit them out of his mouth. And he counseled them by gold refined in the fire that you may live. And it's an interesting thing tonight to recognize that both to the five foolish virgins, the wise said, go and buy your oil. Go get it got to go buy it, pay a price for it. Into the lukewarm church, Jesus says, go and buy gold refined in the fire. There is a price to be paid for hot Christianity. There is a price to be paid to have the extra oil. And tonight, I didn't even get to get into any of my points. That was just the introduction. Isn't that terrible? That's terrible. But here's the thing. I want us to know tonight. But my points tonight, and I'll get to it. I'll, I'll come back and teach this again. Revolve around the kind of price that we would want to pay to have the gold, to have that hot for God lifestyle, to have that extra oil. For instance, you know, if I point one, I'll give you a teaser at least. Hebrews chapter 10, it makes it, I don't understand how anybody can argue with this. And yet, people do all the time. And it's so plain. And it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, especially all the more as you see the day approaching. Ladies and gentlemen, coronavirus, 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 wildfire, 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 earthquake, hurricane, tornado, Famine, destruction, war, nuclear war, war with Iran, war with Iraq, war here, war there. A falling away. Many shall be offended. I didn't even have time to hit that one. Many shall be offended. Many shall be deceived. We're there. We are there current prophetic realities last week, I mean, 
we are seeing Daniel, his 70 weeks come out right in front of us. We're seeing the book of Revelation play out. We're seeing Matthew chapter 24 play out right in front. It doesn't get any more clear. We are there. Now, maybe he'll delay, but he, we're there. We're knocking on the door. It's first and goal, and we're on the half-yard line, and we got Refrigerator Perry in the backfield, for those of you who remember who that is. And it's about to go down. And I don't understand, I just, I don't, I don't understand. And I say this, I, I don't understand how we can get to a place where we think we don't need other people. Or we don't need the church. Sometimes, I have to confess, sometimes, sometimes I, I, and I don't, I don't mean this lovingly, I, but even when I'm in situations that, call for the utmost of dignity. Sometimes I just let my preacher side come out and I just tell it like it is, like at a funeral. And uh, there, there's been funerals I've done and I just stood out and said, look, folks, some of y'all, you're here and you're nodding everything I say. You're saying everything I say. Your butt's not in church. And what, I said this yesterday at a funeral. I said, you say all the church is full of hypocrites. I said, come on in. One more won't hurt. You know, it's amazing. But, but think about this. Well, I don't believe in the church. Well, okay. But watch this. When your loved one dies, all of a sudden you believe there ought to be a pastor that comes free of charge and be available at a moment's notice to meet with you, to grieve with you, to love on you, to, sob your, to help you sob your tears and to help you take the next steps of your life and say good things about your loved one at a moment's notice. But you don't believe in the church. Who's the hypocrite? Amen. Who's the hypocrite? Well, we can do good things on our own. Well, you could, but you don't. Well, I can worship God at home. You could, but you don't, because if you worship God at home, the first thing he'd tell you is, get your butt to church. Now, we worship at home. We take communion at home. We, I tell you, being married to the praise and worship leader is awesome sometimes. But she's always singing. But man, when, we're, when she's learning a new song... For a while, I gotta be. Like, I'm gonna go to the other room. <laughs> She's not in here right now. I can say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I know how y'all. She'll she'll know within three minutes the service being over. You're gonna be a bunch of rats. <laughs> you you know what? Your husband's hand to man. You, rah, 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 rah. I'll go home. And I'll go. Oh, so I heard what you said about me, huh? They're lying, baby. <laughs> I would never say that. I want to watch the video. I've already deleted it. The reality of the last days, though, is we need Jesus all the more. I, uh, we, 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 we need church more, and, and, and we, need, we need less people sitting back and criticizing all the people who do it. Can I tell you what happened? I'll tell you, I have so many people in this community that want to tell us everything we're doing wrong. Want to tell me, oh, well, you, you really shouldn't do it like that. You know, if you're going to do it, do it like this. Do it like this. Well, yeah, but you've done nothing. And we've seen more than 200 salvations in the last 13, 14 months. And we've seen over 200,000 souls come to Christ in the last three years, and we've dug wells, and we've built churches, and we've built homes for the poor, and we feed the poor, and we help the needy, and we're in the nursing homes till they kicked us out for the coronavirus, and, and <laughs> that really happens. They, they, the nursing homes around here told us we can't come back until this thing blows over, so we are live streaming our services into the nursing homes, praise God, because we love these people. We have relationships with them. You know, our people that go, they, 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 they fall in love, you know, and, uh, Anyway, I say that to say, we need to be hot for God. 
And there is a price to be paid. Yeah. yeah I'm sure you've all heard the, church, the joke about the, the little boy who said, he said to his mother, Mom, I really don't want to go to church today. Mom said, honey, you got to go to church today. He said, Mom, I really just want to sleep in today. He said, honey, now you got to go to church today. I really don't want to go to church today. And finally, the mom said, honey, you're the pastor. You have to go to church today. <laughs> Listen, there's a price to be paid to go to church. Wednesday night, you had, some of you, you know, you had to come straight in from work. You haven't had the time to really unwind yet. You've had busy days. You've had long days. You have to get the kids around. Some of you, you know, your, your kids... To, to try to get them ready tonight and get them unwound one of the time they get home from children's church and God knows how many sugar things they're getting back there, praise God, or how much, how much winding up they're getting back there. And, and, and then you got to get them home, get them unwound, get them to bed, get them up early, get to work the next day. It's, it's a price to come to church. And some of you are really, I mean, you're just like a, 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 a you love torture. There's some people working back there with the children and with the babies. They came home from a long day of work Drove in straight to just go back there and work with babies. Can you imagine how crazy you'd have? I mean, how wonderful you'd be. <laughs> so would you guys, would you bring those communion elements down for me here? And we're going to end with communion tonight. And, uh, and if you're at home watching, go grab some juice or whatever liquid you've got. If you've got to get water, get water, orange juice. Grape juice, apple juice, milk. And if you get you a cracker, if you don't have a cracker, get you a bread. If you don't have bread, just reach into the fridge and the first thing you pull out. There's, I, I said, and, and Hallelujah. What we're going to do is we're just going to have a time. I'm going to ask you just to come up in just a moment, and we're going to pray all these elements and receive them together. But remember, I said those three things when we started. I said, some of you, this, this, just be reaffirmed of your covenant of divine health, that by his stripes you were healed. That when we partake of that blood, that juice, that bread that represents the body, we're reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross and our covenant with him. And as we do, I believe there are some that tonight is just one of those nights you need to make something right with God. And up here at the altar and receiving communion, just a great time to do that. Or maybe you need to give something to God. Maybe you're, you've been carrying a burden and, it, and, and, it, and something's affecting you, a fear and anxiety. It's time to lay it down. And by all of us, no matter who we are, when we partake tonight, we will be drawn closer to Jesus Christ because we're recognizing his body and his blood. So we have four different stations up here, um, and uh, we're going to pray, and you can come up at your own. Just come up, and once you receive your communion, that will be, you'll be dismissed from there, okay? And the only thing I ask is give it a few minutes uh, before you start lollygagging too much, or if you're going to lollygag, head out to the foyer to lollygag so the people still having communion aren't, aren't, you know, being distracted by that. And by lollygag, I mean just good fellowship. You know, we're telling, you know, sometimes we joke around, we have a good time. So let's pray tonight and receive these elements in faith. Our dearest Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we ask tonight that you would uh, minister to us, and we want to minister to you. As we partake of this juice and this bread, we're reminded of what happened on Calvary's cross. That your body was broken for us. That you endured the, those stripes and by those stripes we are healed. And today, as we partake, we lift up West Central Indiana and declare our region is immune to the coronavirus and every plague and I declare this area belongs to Jesus Christ. And I declare this area is plague free in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord, I'm reminded of Psalms 91 over these folks that no plague shall come upon their dwelling. 
in Jesus' name. And as we partake of the, the, the blood, the, the juice, we thank you for your blood that cleanses us from all sin and that ratifies our covenant with you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God who heals us. Thank you, Lord. We receive tonight with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. You may come up at your convenience, partake as long as you like, and then dismiss yourself tonight. Dr. Matt, I just want to take this moment and say thank you so much for tuning in to the ministry of Soul Harvest Church Online. And it's a privilege to minister to you each and every time. And I just want to invite you to be a living and active part of our vision to touch the world from West Central Indiana. And if you've been blessed by our ministry, I would ask you to very strongly consider sowing into our ministry to provide that our ministry would continue to go deeper and wider to impact people just like you all around this world that cost the precious blood of Jesus. So I would appreciate a gift of any amount. And, and I would ask if you're on YouTube, click the link below. If you're online on our website, click a, a Give Online. Or if you're on our app, hit the Give Online tab, and it'll take you through a couple easy steps, and you'd be able to sow. And we just pray God's richest blessing on you today. Thank you. God is good. His word is true. And it works in your life, friend.